Hi, welcome back to Walk, Run, Soar. Today is day 18, um, and the, today is a, another two-parter. This is part one. Uh, this is uh, number 23 in the book, Walking on Water. I am recording these very late. It is already after one o'clock in the afternoon. I had a uh, little dental procedure done this morning, um, and I didn't realize, <laughs> I guess I should have, but um, didn't realize that it would involve, you know, the whole making the entire right side of my face numb. Um, so I've only been able, I only got feeling back into my, into my face in the last 30, 45 minutes. So I wasn't able to talk without like biting my tongue and cheek and, you know, it wasn't going to work. So these are going out late. I'm sorry, but I couldn't talk this morning. All right. Walking on water. Our verse is Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. All right, so our author um, is talking about the second time she has uh, ran a marathon, and it was the Santa Rosa Marathon. Um, and she had a good friend that would uh, pace her on longer runs on a bike, which is, I think, that's an awesome idea if you have a friend that'll... Uh, do those long runs with you on a bike, keep the company, it's, it's helpful, I'm sure. Um, but of course, when the race day came, she wasn't able to have her friend on a bike, of course. So she was going in alone, um, and with this particular course, um, there was an angle to the pavement, which she wasn't expecting. And she says by mile 16, it was starting to affect her right knee, the fact that the ground was uneven. Um, she tried stretching it out, but it didn't really help at all, and it persisted. And then after after a while, another runner came up to her and gave uh, he gave her a little bit of advice to maybe shorten her stride so it wouldn't hurt her knee so bad. And then um, he said that he was a doctor, that he actually ran ultra mar marathons. Um, and she says the advice helped, um, and she slowed down her pace, shortened her stride, and you know she was able to continue on. Um, and she did finish, which she says was nothing short of a miracle. Uh, but she brings us back to the story, which I think a lot of us have heard of Jesus walking on the water. Um, and so, you know, the disciples, when they saw him on the water, they were afraid it was a ghost. And he said, no, it's me. And Peter said, if it's really you, tell me to come out on the water to you. Um, and he does. And, you know, Peter walks out on the water. Uh, but then he takes his eyes off of Jesus and realizes that there's a storm going on and lots of crazy waves and starts to sink. Um, so, you know, the classic moral of the story, um, when we take our eyes off of Jesus and focus not on him, but on everything that's going on around us, it can be very overwhelming. And I, hello, am very bad at that. Um, so that's really um, the message in this devotion. Um, and I think it, a, lot of, a lot of us have heard this story, but I think it's just so easy for us to do that, to not keep our focus on what it should be on and then focus on all these problems around us. Um, and I can't remember, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in another devotion video, um, but I know I've mentioned it to the middle schoolers that I, um, middle schoolers and high schoolers that I've done the FCA talks with that, like, I'm bad, I've said it, I'm a bad what if person. Um, and if you try to look too far in the future, it just, it gets overwhelming you know, God's got it. God's, he's, there's a Casting Crown song um, called, I think it's called Already There, but it, I love that song. And it's such a good reminder for me that God, God knows what's going to happen tomorrow and a week from now and a month from now, a year from now. And me sitting here thinking about it is not going to change anything that's going to happen. Uh, so why put that stress on yourself? Um, it's, it's exhausting and a waste of time. <laughs> and I'm constantly, 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 sometimes it feels like every minute of every day having to remind myself of that. So take, uh, take uh, courage, if that is you too. <laughs> um, her faith step, I think we probably have all been here. Have you ever had an injury or come up against an unexpected challenge? Yeah, daily. How do you respond? Maybe you're navigating those stormy waters right now. Write out a prayer, shifting your trust and focus back to Jesus. Our inspirational quote, quote is from Nelson Mandela, president of South Africa from 94 to 99 in anti, an, okay, maybe I'm still a little numb, anti-apartheid leader. 
I've learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not who he does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Maybe I should have waited another hour before I did these. <laughs> Our training note from Coach Sean. Um, if you feel your heart rate begin to increase with no increase in effort, uh, you might be dehydrated. So make sure that you are drinking that water and taking in those electrolytes. So nice, nice, uh, simple, but easily forgotten uh, word for our part one on this Tuesday. So I will see you for part two.